We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Waleska, Georgia, as we get to visit with James Miller, who is the head football coach for the Reinhardt Eagles, heading into his eighth season as the head coach. Been there longer than that, I know, Coach. I want to talk about that in just a moment. But last season, eight and three, a seven-game win streak to close out the season, the regular season, and you make it to the playoffs once again. Ninth consecutive year for the Eagles to make it into the playoffs. Let's start with 2023. Yeah, it was. It was uh, started off kind of rough, to be honest with you. We had a, 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 a tough schedule to begin the season. Um, had a tough loss to Southeastern um, at home. We were up twenty six at halftime. Uh, ended up losing the game twenty three twenty. Did not play well uh, in the second half uh, at all, uh, which was uh, extremely disappointing to be up and then. Uh, to lose the football game. Um, we uh, actually we beat Faulkner to start the year, started off uh, pretty good. Um, and then I'm trying to remember who our second uh, game of the season off the top of my head. Uh, but we, we were one and two going into Georgetown. I know that. And uh, we had to find a way to win that game. Um, and I think we really built some momentum. Oh, we lost to Cumberland's. 20 to 19. Yeah. So we had two really close losses at the beginning of the year. We were trying to figure out our identity. I've been through three offense coordinators in three seasons, all for different reasons, not for anything bad. Um, my first coordinator for Coach Jones left to go to Mercer as an assistant. Uh, I, then I hired a guy named Chet Poblish, who, who left to be closer to his family. And then I hired his best friend, so we didn't have to change terminology. Uh, named uh, Tyler Hennis. And basically, when you go through three coordinators, that's three different uh, people speaking in the room. It's three different personalities. And to be honest with you, the last three years, I think, especially on offense, has been kind of tough on our kids having to change so much. But they've adapted well to it. Um, so it's going to be good to have some, some familiar faces on the offense side of the ball for consecutive years because he's coming back. And so the guys are hearing the same voice now for because he wasn't here in the spring. I had to hire him over the summer. Um, so that made it kind of tough. But I don't, you know, one of our mottos or our standards is no excuses. So I don't want to make excuses. Um, two tough losses. We go into Georgetown, who I think at the time was ranked in the top 10. We go down 21-7 at the half. And we switch quarterbacks at halftime and find a way to come back and win the game, um, which was huge for us. It really built us some momentum, kind of gave us an identity offensively. And then we reeled off seven wins um, and then went into the playoffs, had a tough road trip to Florida, um, which always makes it tough, but everybody's got to do that. And uh, we went down there and we didn't play very well. Um, and that doesn't go on anybody, not the kids or anybody but myself. Um, anytime we lose the first person I put the blame on is me because I'm the head of this program and the way we ended the season is, is not a representation of me or the way we do things here. And, uh, so we're looking to, uh, get things turned around in 2024 and get back to playing, uh, Reinhardt football the right way, uh, which has always been built on toughness, effort, um, and just fight and grit, and and that's what we got to get back to. So I'm excited about the upcoming season. Or I like the kids we got in the program. I like the staff we've put together, and uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. Well, Coach, I I I would admit that I think I I bought into the one and two at the beginning, and and I I will tell you, unfortunately for me, I I picked against you against Georgetown and Pikeville both, and then we. We just made it a statement here on the program that we would not pick against Reinhardt again in the regular season. Uh -huh. and, Keep picking well, against yeah, us. You, you, well, you backed us up. We said we're never going to pick against Reinhardt again in the rest of 2023, and we didn't, and and you guys uh, just went straight through. You know, Coach, the last three seasons, 26 and 7 over that stretch, uh, that's, that's a, a nice run. You've been there, the head coach, seven years prior to this year, but you've been with the program since year two 
of the program. It's been a consistent run for you all. Again, nine straight playoff appearances, too. To what do you attribute that consistency? What what's a hallmark of the program? Um, well, Coach Chronic started at Danny Chronic. Um, and he he built this place on toughness, on effort, um, on doing things the right way. And then when his son took over, Drew, we kind of continued to build it on that. And that's what this place has been known on known for is having guys that are going to be tough, having guys that are going to be at play hard, having guys that are going to try to do things the right way on and off the field. Um, and that's what we're trying to continue to do since I've taken over. Um, I think I like to say, you know, people around the country would say, you know, when you play us, you, you know, you're going to get a tough game and you know, we're going to come prepared and we're going to try to do things the right way, both, like we said, on and off the field, and, and we're going to handle ourselves uh, with respect and we're going to try to respect the game or the game's going to disrespect you. So that's what this place has been built on. And uh, I'm a I'm, I'm pretty hard-nosed guy, kind of an old-school guy. So um, that that's what it's going to continue to be built on is doing things the right way, um, holding ourselves accountable, holding ourselves to the standard, trying to build guys that will uh, – be accountable to each other, have some leadership skills and, and, and be able to, to communicate effectively um, and just be a good human being, do the right thing. Once they leave here, you know, I, I, that's what I want to see when kids leave our program. I want guys more than anything. They're just going to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. So that's what we try to do every day. I appreciate that, Coach. I appreciate the old school mentality. I, I think it can be very effective. We look ahead to 2024 then. Let's talk about the offense just a bit. A number of all-conference all conference performers returning on the offensive line. I know that's uh, always where you, you need to have some stability and some strength there too. And there may be some competition. Taylor Jackson returning to the quarterback position, but he might uh, might be competing a little bit as we head into the fall. Yes, up front, um, I think we have a chance to be to be pretty good. Um, Zach Lau returns at left tackle. He's a returning all-conference performer. Aaron Emman returns at center. He's a returning all-conference performer. Um, we have a couple guys that are coming off injury. Um, Sam Stout uh, will be back this season. He, he injured his knee uh, about midway through the season. Actually, I think against Georgetown. And then uh, – uh, Lorenzo Robinson actually broke his leg last spring and has been out, not last spring, the spring before, mm -hmm. has been out since then and has battled all the way back. Um, and I think he's going to be ready to go this fall, which is pretty cool. He was an all-conference guy in 2022. Um, so excited about what we got coming back up front. We're going to be, I think, the biggest we've ever been. Um we and with those guys being out, we were able to get some guys in the spring and really create some depth and some competition up front for us to be to be better as a group. Um, Xavier Walker was a kid that started five games for us last year. That was a freshman, a true freshman. That he'll be back. Excited about him. Another guy that played a little bit for us, but's going to have a huge role for us this fall is Jaden Calhoun, uh, who will be a, a sophomore coming back. And then at quarterback, um, Taylor was the starter the final six and a half games for us last year. Played really, really good football. Um, came back in the spring, and I, I think he would tell you that I told him, you know, didn't have his best spring and now has created competition with Steph Craig, who's back as a junior. Um, and they're going to battle it out um, in fall camp. Steph has a slight edge right now, um, but they are neck and neck. And, and really uh, going to battle it out for who starts that first game. And who knows, we might play both of them. I don't know. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see how it how it turns out in fall camp. Um, but they're both been up here all summer. They've both been training extremely hard. Um, and I think both physically and mentally, they've been getting better all summer. Uh, at running back, we returned Ja Colbert. I'm just looking at my depth chart to help me. But at <laughs> running back, we returned Ja he was a thousand yard rusher for us last year. Uh, very shifty guy, runs hard for 170 pounds. Um, he's coming back. Ty McKee's coming off an ACL. 
he finished last season. I think he played the last four or five games of the season, but he I don't think he was still 100%. The year before in 2022, he was a 500-plus yard rusher. So he'll be back, and he'll be in that second-string spot right now. And then at receiver, we return Tyshawn Jordan, who's an all-conference guy. We return uh, Tremaine Demps, who had a small role last year but played really good in the playoff game. I think he had like 80 yards receiving and a touchdown. Um, and then we also return a guy named David Freiberg, who just threw uh, in the Olympic trials javelin. Um, now, he didn't participate with us in the spring because I let him prepare for that. Um, he's a three-time national champion javelin thrower. He's only been thrown in two years and wow. had the ability to go to the – and finished seventh. He was only like a couple spots from making the team. Like it was really, really cool. So super proud of him, but he's he's ready to go. He's itching to get back. He loves football. That's what makes him special. He's just a competitor. Um, he easily could have went to another school and just ran track um, and probably get some NIL money. I don't know, but he's that old school guy. He His teammates are important to him. Reinhardt's important to him. And he's going to finish it out here and get his master's and then go try to be a javelin guy full time. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and then offensively, we'll have some other guys step up. A guy that did really well in the spring that people probably don't know about is Cam Curtis from Calhoun, Georgia. He uh, he, he had a really, really good spring. He was our spring MVP. And I think he'll, he'll uh, be ready to play come fall. And then tight ends, we have four guys that can play football with Jake Wallace, Clayton Holland, Austin Davis, and J.P. Polk. So we – we that I would say offensively we have more experience coming back than we do defensively. So I'm hoping we're a little bit more ahead of the curve. Um, so uh, that's kind of where we are. But I, I feel good about the continuity. I feel good about uh, the staff we have on this side of the ball. Um, it just it, – it, we feel more cohesive – just like we talked about before, having that same voice in the room, it's it, it was more consistent in the spring. I think the kids felt more comfortable uh, with everything, with Coach Hennis, with everything that we're doing. Um, so it, it it made it it made it more enjoyable, um, and uh, I'm excited about the group we have coming back. That no, sounds like that from all facets of your offense. We're visiting now with James Miller, who is the head football coach, of the Reinhardt Eagles, heading into his eighth season right here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please take the time, subscribe to the channel. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach on defense, Keon McGee had five picks last year in that secondary, and uh, his running mate in the secondary, Kellen Neal, not coming back. McGee coming back. Take us to the defense. Yeah, Keon, is, he plays our dog position, which, to be honest with you, has to be probably your best football player. Um, it's the guy that has to do the most. He's got to cover guys man-to-man. -man. He's got to blitz. He's got to uh, help set the front. He's got to play in the box a little bit. So he's got to be super athletic. He's got to be strong. He's got to be fast. He's got to be a little bit of jack-of-all-trades, which he is. He was defense player of the year in the conference. Um, just a really, really great kid, super uh, athletic kid, strong, been here all summer, uh, so excited to have him back. Um, probably the place where we lost the most depth uh, was up front with our defensive line. Um, so we're going to be, uh, you know, relying on a few transfers, relying on some freshmen to come in and play because we lost three starters up front, three really good players. We lost another kid to some depth. Uh, so we're, we're kind of revamping that position a little bit, but I'm excited about what we got. Uh, we, uh, signed a kid out of actually out of Faulkner. That was an all American last year named Emmanuel Olighton. Um, so he'll, he'll be coming to our program. He had a great spring. He's been working his tail off over the summer. Um, he'll be ready to go. Uh, another kid that transferred to us from uh, Bethel University will be a starter at Three Technique Force. His name is Kobe Sloan. Um, another kid that's coming to the program, bought into what we're doing and how we're doing it, and has earned himself a starting spot. Uh, Nathaniel Sanford is coming back. He'll be our nose guard. He was a second string guy last year, but he'll be starting. Um, and Riley McKee will be the rush right now. And then the backups, you know, we're trying to figure that all out. But one guy that stood out from the spring or two guys 
was Nolan Marshall and, and Rashad Woonham. Uh, Nolan's a redshirt freshman. Or actually, I'm sorry, a sophomore. He played a little bit as a freshman. And uh, Rashad will be a senior. He's a guy that's been in the program a long time and is trying to earn his spot in the rotation. And then there's a couple freshmen we'll throw in there. But we do have some experience coming back at linebacker. Um, Orlando Gandy's a guy that's played a lot of football for us, either on special teams or, or in that starting group. Cortez Brown is another guy that will be a second year with us that uh, was an all-conference guy last year that now, uh, you know, will we'll be coming back at the Will linebacker spot. He's he's a guy that uh, is very versatile. He can he can rush the passer, so we'll put him in some, some third down packages up front, actually, on the D-line, let him go chase the quarterback around. But he'll also be playing linebacker for us, so he, he's versatile. He, you can move him around the different spots. He played a little dog in the spring because we were shorthanded with some injuries. So he he's probably one of our most athletic, one of our most strong kids on the entire team, and it shows in his versatility. And then in the secondary, we return – Keon, but we also return a kid named Braylon Jones. He'll be taking over for Kellen Neal, um, which is a tough duty being an all, uh, one of the only kids I've ever heard of being a five-time all-conference guy. Um, but Braylon was the freshman of the year in the conference. He'll be uh, taking over at free safety. And then we got to figure out the other two safety spots and how they fit in. Sutton's a guy, Markel Sutton out of Atlanta, is a guy that we can uh, – kind of fit into one of those roles. And then we return on, uh, I believe it was an all-conference uh, cornerback, Bright Brighton Peters out of Norcross High School. He, uh, he'll he be coming back as a junior uh, to return to that boundary corner spot and then trying to figure out who's going to be the other corner on the other side. Um, but I, I like our kids. I like, uh, I like what we're doing. You know, defensively, I think, uh, we we just got to play hard. We got to run to the football. Um, we got to try to get a little bigger up front, uh, which I think we did in recruiting. Um, and we, you know, it, defense, are, you know, you can scheme them up all you want, but in my opinion, you got to tackle and you got to you got to be assignment alignment technique sound, and you got to get effort to the football. Mm -hmm. So and try to create some turnovers. So it's uh, I'm excited about our our kids. I think our locker room is the healthiest it's been in a long time. Um, I shouldn't say that. I think it's the healthiest it's been since 2022 because uh, we had a really good group that year. Um, I, I just I think we got a good group of kids that are going to play hard. that are going to be coachable. that are going to uh, buy into what we're doing and how we're doing. it. Yes, sir. I, I understand just to, to stay with personnel just for a little bit longer, you do have some some spots to fill special teams wise. Yes. Uh, so we lost our field goal kicker, our punter. Uh, Colby Harrison was our punter in 2022. He got hurt, tore his uh, hip labrum. So he had surgery. He'll be back from that uh, this, uh, this fall. He'll, he'll be our punter again. And then – we got to figure out our field goal kicker. We got a couple guys in the mix for that spot um, and just try to figure out uh, what we're going to do at that position. And then return wise, there's a couple guys that could be our punt returner and kickoff returner. Um, I like to see, you know, think Ty McKee could be one of the kickoff guys. Uh, CJ McGee can return punts. Tyshawn Jordan can do some stuff back there. Um, it's just figuring out the right mix and who's the right guy for punt and kickoff. Cause as a return guy, to me, those are two different spots. Uh, unless you're like Devin Hester, it can do it all. Uh, it's a little bit different. There, there are only so many Devin Hesters though. So you're right. You're right. <laughs> Well, Coach, you get the season underway on a Thursday night and uh, against a, a, what used to be a very formidable NAI program in Carson Newman. You go on the road for your first three games. Again, that Thursday night, August 29th against Carson Newman, and then Saturday, September 7th at Faulkner, and then the next weekend at Southeastern before you finally come home to take on Cumberland's at home. Can you tell us a little bit about the opening to your schedule? 
Yes, we picked up Carson Newman. They were looking for a game. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a great environment. It's a great place to go play. They have an awesome stadium, awesome facility. Um, they got a new coach um, who's going to present new things to us. Uh, I don't think they're going to be the same offensively. I think defensively they, they kept the same staff intact. Um, so there will be some familiarity there from what we've seen on film. But offensively, they're going to be completely different. I think they're going back to what their bread and butter is, the triple, um, and what that place was built on um, when when the former coach, uh, uh, Ken Sparks, was there. So I don't know if they'll be split back veer, but uh, there'll, there'll be some type of triple. So uh, we're, we're preparing for that. Um, but I, I always think it's good to take our kids places like that. We played Kennesaw a couple years ago, which was a great environment, 8,000, 9,000 people. A lot of our kids haven't pray, played in front of stuff like that. So I always think that's good to experience that. Um, and and I just think it's, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be the first game of the year for both teams. So I think their place is going to be packed with the new staff. And I, I can't wait to bring our team up there and see what we got. Um, so I think it's a great test to kind of see where we are and what we need to improve on and what we need to get better at. Um, but also, I'm not going up there to just take an L. You know, we're going up there to try to win. So um, exactly. we're going to put everything we got into it and and give it our best shot. Um, Faulkner is kind of like a rivalry for us to right down the road. That's a day trip for us. Um, so we'll we'll head over to Alabama. They always play us tough, um, and and uh, Coach Gray does a great job. Him and his staff preparing his guys, um, and we'll get ready for them. And then Southeastern's a tough trip because it's far. You know that's a good solid eight hour trip down to Lakeland, um, which I always think anything over six hours is is tough on the kids because we don't fly. You know we're not uh, Virginia or Virginia Tech. We're we're bussing eight hours, um, so it makes it tough. But the one thing that is nice, to an extent, is you don't have to play till night, but then you don't return home till 10 a.m. the next day. So mm -hmm. it's the best of both worlds. We get our, get to get our legs under us the next day instead of playing at like noon or 1.30, and we don't have to play till that night. So we get to sleep in a little bit, get our legs back under us from being on the bus all day. But, you know, it's a tough week the next week. So, um I'm excited to go down there. Um, their coach uh, has done a great job with that team, uh, preparing them. Um, they beat us last year. You know, there's a little bit of revenge factor there. If people say there isn't, they're lying to you. There's always revenge factor. And uh, we want to go down there and, and whoop them. Um, but uh, he does a great job. They got big, strong, athletic kids that can play. Um, I think they got a lot return on defense. Um, and offensively, they were huge up front, so it's going to be a challenge for our defensive line and front seven linebackers uh, to stop the run because I know they want to run the football. So um, excited about that game. But, you know, I, I try not to look ahead. You know, we're going to focus, you know, the first two and a half weeks on us and us getting better. And then that next week and a half, we'll focus on Carson Newman and that's all we'll talk about. And we'll take this thing one game at a time. Um, you know, the goal of camp is to try to get us closer as a family, as a brotherhood, and and us trying to learn situational football, um, us trying to do the little things right. Those are some of the goals we're going to have uh, for camp, just playing good, sound football. And then when you get to Carson Newman, you'll start focusing on what they do and how they do it and, and try to adjust things a little bit offensively and defensively to what they do with scheme wise. And then, and then we'll go from there. But uh, the longer I've been doing this, he's you got to take it one game at a time. Can't get ahead of yourself. I understand coach. Well, I appreciate that. That, and I, we, we wish you well this year as we uh, get to visit today with James Miller, the head football coach for the Reinhardt Eagles coach. We will follow the Eagles and it is very, very unlikely we will be picking against the Eagles at any point in time. We learned our lesson last year. So uh, <laughs> we wish you the best, but thank you very much for the, giving us the time today here on Midwest Sports Net. Absolutely. No problem. I uh, just want one thing real quick. Uh, we, 
I, I just feel like I need to say that we, we had a kid pass away, Edder and Chester played for us. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, right earlier in the summer. And uh, just to anybody that's watching and listening, like uh, don't take any day for granted because you don't know if it's going to be there tomorrow. So uh, it was, it's been tough on our kids, but that, you know, kids are resilient. They're responding well, and uh, we're going to play for him all season. And uh, you know, just, uh, just hug your family, hug your kids, tell your parents, you love them, uh, be good people, treat each other well. And uh, you know, if you do that every day, I think this place would be a whole lot better. So appreciate it. Thank you for having me.